Hello, everybody. Uh, our quiz will start quite soon. We're just giving a few latecomers the chance to uh, log on. If you need to get a quick drink or a snack or nip to the loo or whatever, you've got a few minutes to do that. Um, feel free to say hi in the chat box tonight, as we know who's there. There's quite a lot of people there, apparently. Um, if your chat function isn't enabled, I'm told it's fairly straightforward. I am so untechnical, so please accept no help from me. But it's a fairly simple process. You set up a YouTube channel for anybody with a Gmail account. This is apparently um, as easy as typing in your name when prompted, so give it a go. Uh, personally, I have to ask my four-year-old. For anybody who doesn't know um, about the Charlie Waller Memorial Trust, and that's why we're here tonight, it was set up in 1997 after Charlie tragically took his own life at the age of 27. His family then did something which a lot of families just couldn't do. A lot of people just go into a corner and say, I really can't do anymore. Well, they set up a trust. They wanted to help other people um, to learn how to look after their own mental health, particularly young people. And that's what they've done now for over 22 years. They reach thousands of people every year with their free mental health, inspiring uh, all sorts of information, all sorts of experts help them. It all goes to schools universities and workplaces across the UK. And we'll tell you a lot more about that during the course of this evening. But first, hello, welcome. I'm Chris Tarrant. Um, yes, I do need a haircut. Yes, I am wearing a revolting shirt, but what a nice sunny day. Um, as I said, everything tonight is going to the uh, Charlie Waller Memorial Trust. They work tirelessly. I've been very aware of them for a long time now in my own area. They work tirelessly for young people, particularly young people um, with mental problems. And you have to say this year, it's just been the worst year. I know we're only in June, but there's no real sign yet. I suppose we're coming out of a bit slowly, but I'm not holding my fingers crossed yet. So many mental problems this year uh, for all sorts of people as the long, long lockdown slowly melts, but um, as we fight this awful, unexpected, horrific pandemic, um, all sorts of people have a need for people like this, this amazing charity. So I'm proud to be involved with them tonight. Um, the quiz itself, um, I'll just tell you first about donating. You can donate up to 20 quid uh, by texting the word, there it is, nice simple thing to follow, text CWMT quiz, plus your donation amount. So if you say, think, oh, I'll give them a fiver, you go CWMT quiz, five pounds, so just put five, plus your donation amount to 70085. You can also donate, just click on the link below uh, to our Just Giving page, or you can just click on the donate button, go to the donate button on our website, www.cwmt.org.uk. It sounds complicated, uh, trust me, it's not. I understand it, so it really, really can't be. Um, the quiz itself, six rounds. Um, try and do a break after about three rounds for you. Um, you can confer, you can even phone a friend tonight. I can't see what you're up to. Uh, we have got a couple of very special guests. Well, they say they're very special. A couple of really good mates of mine tonight. You will know them. Um, now, obviously, we can't really pick out a winner um, doing it like this because you can cheat like mad. It doesn't really matter. It's just going to be a load of fun. Um, but we will run a prize draw. Um, you can confer, you can even phone a friend tonight. I can't see what you're up to. Uh, we have got a couple of very special guests. Well, they say they're very special. A couple of really good mates of mine tonight. You will know them. Um, now, obviously, we can't really pick out a winner um, doing it like this because you can cheat like mad. It doesn't really matter. It's just going to be. Ah, oh, who was that? This is question number one. Who was that bloke? Um, so we can't, we obviously can't be, pick out a winner for no matter what you're doing out there, but you can confer, you can phone a friend. We are running a prize draw. We've got an amazing prize. There's a huge mountain of the finest chocolates that money could buy. Um, and also this beautiful glass tumbler, um, autographed by me. Now, if you don't want it, me to sign it, it's okay. I understand. If you want to sell it on eBay, that's fine. But if, a bit later on, I will give you a password. I'll give you a password to get in. And then basically we will pick that out. I think we're closing the lines for that on Sunday and we'll pick out a winner and announce it on the website on Monday. Right, pens and papers ready. Don't put answers please in the chat box so everybody can see them. Uh, it will be a brutal regime because basically no whinging, 
because all our answers are right. Uh, mainly it's one point for each, each answer, but obviously one or two of the questions have got more than one part, so there might be two or three points available. Right, round one. Question number one, nice and easy. I love this, nice and easy. Um, if, you, if you dug a hole in the center of the earth, starting in Wellington in New Zealand, right up through the earth, get your shovel, Wellington, New Zealand, up you go. What European country would you come out into? As I say, question number one, nice. So it's an easy. So I'll just do that again for the harder thinking. Question number one, you get your shovel, you're down in New Zealand, you're in this beautiful town of Wellington, which I visited many, many years ago. Um, you hold your breath, you dig right up through the center of the earth. Where would you come out to when you popped out unexpectedly in a country somewhere in Europe? Okay, they get a little harder, I should warn you. Question number two, Actually, <laughs> we started with one of the hardest. Question number two. What is the name of Harry Potter's pet owl? That's a bit more our level, I think. What is the name of Harry Potter's pet owl? Number three, I'll give you these at the end of the round again. Um, number three, if you're discombobulated, as I am frequently, particularly in the evenings. If you're discombobulated, what are you? What are you doing? What state are you in? Discombobulated. Now, in the good old days when we used to go on holiday and go to the beach and things, um, we used to play volleyball a lot, and it used to be about 38 on one side and 46 on the other side. But if you're doing it properly, how many players are there in a volleyball team? How many players in a volleyball team? Two more this round, round one. Um, number five, the American city of Las Vegas. Uh, Las Vegas, it's beautiful, everything, everything, and I mean everything is possible in Vegas, and some things you will never have even thought of. Um, Las Vegas is in fact a Spanish word for what? The vines, the valley, the plains. Okay, Las Vegas, American city in Nevada, but Las Vegas, what does the Spanish word actually mean? Does it mean the vines? Does it mean the valley or does it mean the plains? Okay, one more. Question number six. And then we'll show them to you one more time. Then we'll give you a couple of minutes to confer. Or cheat, as you call it. Go on the search engine. Um, what is unusual about the tomato-based soup gazpacho? What is unusual about the tomato-based soup, Gaz Pacho? You will have seen it on menus in, when we used to go to places like Spain and France and Italy, all over Europe, which we may or may not be able to do this summer. But what is unusual about the tomato-based soup, Gaz Pacho? Okay, should we have a quick look at those one, one more go before we take, yeah, let's have a look at them. So, if you dug a hole through the centre of the earth, starting from Wellington, New Zealand, which European, I don't know why this amuses me, it's just like, I can imagine people settling down for a quiz going, what? Which European country would you end up in? Number two, what is the name of Harry Potter's pet owl? Uh, number three, if you're discombobulated, what are you? How many players are there on a proper game of volleyball? How many players are there on a volleyball team? Uh, the American city of Las Vegas is in fact a Spanish word for what? A, the vines, B, the valley, or C, the plains. So you can sort of take it as read, Las means the. So what's the Vegas bit mean? 
And number six, what is unusual about the tomato-based soup known as gazpacho? Okay, I'll give you about a minute and so to confer on those, or as we call it, top your glass up. Uh, and we go on to round two. There's loads of people out there. I, I will call out some names in a minute, but um, let's try and master the technology. Oh, yeah. oh, there's loads of people. God, it's like being on telly. Um, thanks to all these people who donated lots to us, and thank you. Um, Jackie Mallander, Vanessa Stanthorpe, Stainthorpe, I think, sorry, Mom. Uh, Margaret and John, Richard Sayer, um, all the knights and the duskits and pearly, peri, per, oh, the duckets and perkins, okay. Who are they? Oh, Ruth Thompson, who's 30 today. Just thought I'd say that. These years, she's been claiming she's 23. She's 30 today. Okay, I think we've got all oh, the lush, the lush ladies of Lansing are back again. Marvellous. Bless them. Don't mean lush as in luscious or lush as in a bunch of lushes. I don't know. Do you find in the lockdown you're drinking more than ever? Sorry, I digress. <laughs> but I am. Round two. Uh, pens at the ready. Right, uh, here we go. 100 degrees is boiling point for water in Celsius at sea level, but what is it in Fahrenheit? So 100 degrees, 100 degrees, 100 degrees is boiling point for water in Celsius uh, at sea level, but what is it in Fahrenheit? Number two, who saved, sorry, I'll do that again. Who played, it's rather more important. Who played Private Ryan in saving Private Ryan? Who played Private Ryan in saving Private Ryan? Number three, this is a strange one, which, um, which type of fruit is found at the top of the men's Wimbledon trophy? There is one. There's a bit of fruit. Is it strawberry? Is it pineapple? Or is it lemon? What type of fruit is found at the top of the men's Wimbledon trophy? Is it strawberry? Is it pineapple or is it a lemon? Okay, number four. Oh, which year did Yuri Gagarin become the first human in space? I think they'd already sent up a dog and I think they sent up, I think they sent up a monkey. But the first human was a guy called Yuri Gagarin. What year did that happen? Um, if it's any help at all, it was the same year that Hawaii, Hawaii became the 50th uh, state of America. And it was also the year that Emma Thompson was born. I don't know if that helps you or not, probably not. Oh, you'll love this. I used to hate these at school. What is the 11th prime number? I just hate prime numbers. Only because I, I could never work them out. What is the 11th prime number? Okay. So six questions this round. Now, this is a bit of a treat. A bit of a scoop, really. We've got the man who, um, an old friend of mine, I've known him for years, but the man who was the self-proclaimed saviour of Radio 1, a legend in radio, a legend in his own mind. Our next question will be set by DJ, that low-life breed, the DJ, 
Chris Moyles. Hello, Chris Tarrant. Hello, everybody watching. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the Charlie Waller quiz. Uh, it's a great cause. I hope you're having fun. I'd just like to say hello. I'm Chris Moyles, by the way, um, despite this. Uh, well done to Chris Tarrant doing an, uh, an excellent job of hosting tonight. You you should look into that as a career, maybe. You're very good at hosting a, a quiz. You're like a, like a rich man's Jeremy Clarkson. Um, so I have a question. Uh, now, this is one of my favorite music questions. I have been known in the past to play the odd song on the radio. In fact, I think I've played six in the last 30 years of being on air. Uh, in fact, I I'm actually in the same building where Chris Tarrant uh, used to do his show from. We're on from 6.30 to 10 on Radio X. And I believe, Chris, you were also on from whenever you turned up till 10. Um, anyway, uh, this is a music question, and this is a cracker. Can you name for me three artists, three different artists, that have had a UK chart hit with a song called The Power of Love? Three. Not one, not two. Three. Three artists that have had a UK hit with The Power of Love. Chris, it's back to you. Put your drink down and carry on. Bye. He knows me so well. Sorry about that. Um, yes, I should tell you, by the way, that Chris, um, being a great professional and very busy man, with a host of engagements that he always got, set the question, but didn't actually stay around to tell us the answer. Luckily, because we're steeped in music, we actually do know the answer. He actually just went. Our next special guest later had the courtesy to stay on a bit and actually give us the answer, but Chris went because he's very busy. So let's have a look again at um, that round. Let's have a look at all six questions. Here they are again. Or possibly not. Will you, anytime you like, there they are. At the speed of a striking slug. 100 degrees is the boiling point for water in Celsius at sea level. What is it in Fahrenheit? Who played Private Ryan in Saving Private Ryan? Um, in tennis, there's a piece of fruit at the top of the men's Wimbledon trophy. Is it a strawberry? Is it a pineapple? Or is it a lemon? Um, in which year did Yuri Gagarin become the first human in space? And to help you or possibly confuse you. Um, the same year Hawaii was admitted as the 50th American state. It was also the same year that Emma Thompson was born. Um, what is the 11th prime number? And Chris's question, can you name the three original artists that have had a UK chart hit with a song called Power of Love? This is the original artist, the song, in each case, it's totally different, but they've all got the same title and they were all, they're all called The Power of Love. Each of them were hits for three separate artists. Give me a bit of time to think about that one. I'd like to tell you how many points there are available so far, but... It's quite a lot. So round three, ready, set, go. Um, I'll just give you that um, donation information again, just before I start this round. Um, you can donate up to £20 by texting the word CWMT quiz plus the actual amount of your donation. So CWMT quiz 20 would be good, uh, but whatever, it's, it, times are hard. So we're grateful for whatever you can spare. It's been a very, very tough first few months of the year. CWMT quiz plus your donation amount and send all that to 70085. Just text it. 
uh, you can go to the Just Giving link. Uh, that's on the bottom of the video on YouTube, or you can go to the Donate button on the website. Okay, ready for round number three. This is um, this is an interesting one as well. Round number three. Uh, I'm going to show you six images um, of board games. Six very different images of board games. Uh, I want you to tell me what each one is, or write down on your pen and paper what each one is. And then at the end, I'll ask you to, if you can, work out the order in which they actually appeared. So round three, six very different images of board games. Here's number one. What's this? Name the game. If it's any help, I will tell you that I knew this one at once and I was completely wrong. What is it? Number two. Some of these go back a very, very long time. Number two, what's that? What game is it? Can hear your brains creaking. Number three. Name the game, and then at the end, I want you to tell me for extra points the order in which they were released to the excited public. Number four. What's that? <laughs> Number five. Name the game. And when did it appear? But we'll ask you that at the end. I just want you to give me the order in which they appeared at the end for extra points. But for now, just give me the name of each game. Number six. So that's five. Number six coming up. Yeah, what's that? I wouldn't curse that. So six games, some of them well-known, some of them <laughs> not quite so well-known. Um, so there they are. Now, can you put them in order of when they were first released, starting with the earliest? And we won't accept, no, Chris, I can't. Can you put them in order of when they were first released, starting with the earliest? So six board games. What were they? What were they called? And when did the first one appear? All the way through to the most recent. I wonder how the lush ladies of Lansing are doing at this moment. Have they still got their elegance and poise? Probably not. So what are they called? And the order in which they appeared for extra points. We'll give you Two points, one for each right one, two points if you get uh, all six in order, which I think is quite tough. Uh, we'll give you one point if you get three out of six in the right order. See how you do. Um, okay, we'll take a break. I've said that before. We'll take a break. Uh, join us again in a few minutes.
go and sort yourself out. You've still got a bit of time to change your mind about your answers. And uh, when you come back, I'll do some answers for the first couple of rounds. Join us again. Okay, apparently, apparently that's all the time I've got. Um, I was just getting comfy there. So let's do the answers for the first couple of rounds. Um, so round one, there are six points in total. So the first question we asked you was this thing about digging through the earth. So you started in Wellington, New Zealand. You dug your way up through the earth and I asked you which European country did you pop out and re-greet the world in? The answer is Spain. Uh, number two, this one is a shock to the Spaniards. Uh, number two, uh, the name of Harry Potter's pet owl was Hedwig, or Hedwig. Uh, if you're, number three, if you're discombobulated, um, you're confused, you're kind of bewildered. You're, I think, confused, basically. Number three, confused. Um, the number of players in a volleyball team, I mean, if you ever see it, I was gonna say on the beach, if we ever get to a beach again, um, it can be 100 each side, but the actual official answer is six. So if it goes to something like the Olympics or a league match, volleyball team should only have six. Um, number five, the American city of Las Vegas. Um, the las means the, but um, the Spanish word mean, Vegas means the vines, the valley, or the plains. The right answer is the plains. There's somebody ringing me up, going away. Somebody saying, loving the haircut, loving the haircut. God, you look awful. Thanks, Chris Lang. Um, yeah, it's hard to argue with that. He's my friend. Um, Las Vegas was is in Nevada. Nevada was originally like Texas and New Mexico was actually part of Spain. That's part, part of Spain. You bewildered me, Chris Lang. Uh, was actually part of uh, Mexico. So Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, Texas and New Mexico were all part of, would still be part of Mexico. And Donald Trump would be a very confused man with Walls keeping him away from one of his most lucrative uh, earning areas. Um, now, number six. Um, the, well, the obvious thing about the, uh, the tomato uh, soup that is called gazpacho is that it's served cold. I have a very good friend. I don't have many. I have a very good friend uh, called David, who may be watching, who's not the most sophisticated man, and he wants... Not only did he serve it hot, he actually managed to, to burn it. There's this dreadful smell coming from the kitchen, and he actually managed to burn the gazpacho. So if David invites you around to his house for dinner, don't go. Um, now, uh, round two. Uh, this was the one about the boiling point. Eight points in total. Uh, 100 degrees is the boiling point for water in Celsius at sea level. What is the Fahrenheit equivalent? It's actually 212. Good. Uh, oh, who played Private Ryan? Now, the answer, I nearly gave this away in a strange sort of way. The answer is actually Matt Damon. And a lot of people, I bet, 
will have put Tom Hanks. But Tom Hanks actually saved Private Ryan. Private Ryan was played by Matt Damon, and it was Tom Hanks who saved him. Great film. Um, number three. Oh, yeah, this is weird. There is a piece of fruit at the top of the men's Wimbledon trophy. Um, strawberry, pineapple, or lemon. It is actually pineapple. We went through all sorts of strange search engines and things trying to find out why and i have to tell you we've no idea if anybody wants to come through on the chat and tell us why there is a piece of pineapple at the top of the men's wimbledon trophy we'd be jolly grateful because we haven't a clue but that's the right answer uh number four yuri gagarin the first human in space the year that hawaii became the 50th state of america and emma thompson was born was 1961. uh the 11th prime number is 31. And I bet a lot of people said 29, but two uh, is actually a prime number. Two is the only even prime number. So it's 31. The last one set by the incomprehensible Mr. Moyles. So the question was, which three, which three artists originally had hits in the UK with the power of love. Three separate artists, three completely different songs, but all with the same title. And they are uh, Jennifer Rush, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, and Huey Lewis and the News. And if you've got all six there, you've got eight points and all. If you've got all six, I think you did pretty well. Um, round three, I think, probably caused panic. Um, I asked you to name the game. So there they are. Number one is Cluedo. Apropos nothing, whenever I get asked what was the worst television program you ever did, it was Cluedo. I have never hated a program so much in all my life. I don't know why, it was just awful. There were six episodes and if the Reverend Green hadn't done the murder by the end of show five. He did it in show six. It was, and several mates of mine have also hosted that fine show and they've all hated it as well. Um, number two, I digress, sorry, number two. Uh, Game of Life, which for some reason makes me think of the late Splendid Brucey. Life, it's a name in the game. Um, number three was the Logo Game. Number four, Ludo. Uh, number five, Mastermind, and number six, Othello. And for extra points, I did ask you if you could work out the order in which they appeared uh, to the public, starting with the earliest. Uh, the very earliest was The Game of Life uh, in 1860. I remember that coming on the market. What a morning that was. Um, Othello was 1883, uh, then it was Ludo, uh, 1890, 1896. Um, then it was Cluedo, Cluedo in 1949. Then it was Mastermind in 1970. And the most recent was the Logo Game in 2009. Um, so eight points for that round, a total possible so far of 22 points each. Um, for anyone who's got that right, that's got everything right so far, I suspect. I don't know, because you, you can't be sure with these things. You, you could tell me anything. But I think if you have got 22 points, you've done very, very well. So I'll give you something. We're going to take a break, another break, but I'll give you something to ponder. Um, three questions while you take a break. This will be round four. Um, what are the busiest five train stations in the UK? What are the busiest five, the five busiest train stations in the UK? What are the top five ice lollies? Now that does include those ones containing ice cream because they are the best by miles. Um, <laughs> there's a YouGov survey. Haven't you got, got better things to do? Completed in 2018. So top five ice lollies. And what are the five boroughs of New York City? Yeah. 
as they say on game shows, we'll take a break.
you're not quite sure during these quizzes when you're on and when you're not, but um, welcome back. Um, there's quite a lot of small, tiny names coming in. So hello to um, oh yeah, the Womble of Wimbledon says, I've got 19. Womble, you've done terribly well. Awful Rod says, I love your shirt. I want it. You can't have it. You can't see it in this, but I am wearing the matching trousers. Um, I'll tell you that donation advice again. You can donate up to £20 uh, by texting the word CWMT quiz uh, plus your donation. So if it's 20, you put CWMT quiz 20 and then send that amount, text it to 70085. Bless you. Loads of donations tonight. Thank you so much. Um, you can go to the Just Giving link. Uh, at the bottom of this in the video, or you can even just uh, go to the donate button on the CWMT website. So bless you for what you're doing. All proceeds tonight go to the Charlie Waller Memorial Trust. I've known about this trust. I've been involved with them on and off for years, but it was a very tough old star. Uh, in 1997, after Charlie tragically um, took his own life at the age of 27, his family, when they got over the shock, set up the trust to help other people, particularly young people, dealing with their own mental problems. Uh, as I said earlier, this year of all years with the lockdown, there have been so many people who have had so many problems of depression and fear, actually, a lot of fear because this awful world pandemic is still scaring people, still scaring me. Uh, 22 years later, they reach thousands of people every year with their free mental health training all over the UK, at schools, universities, workplaces, um, primary care. They help people spot the signs of depression uh, and other common mental health problems. And they always make sure they're backed up by science. And uh, they work with experts in the field. In the last three and a half years, they've sent 5,500 mental health books to schools and other youth avenues uh, through their book club which has been very popular and very well received. They've also recently released a set of free webinars and you can watch any of these on the website. Uh, at this current time, as we've been saying throughout the night, it's especially important. Uh, we look after our mental health of ourselves and anyone, our family, our kids. Um, and once the lockdown kicked in, the trust swung into action with a whole string of ideas um, to help us all through the lockdown however long it lasts, I know they've eased it, but it's, it's still quite scary because the figures are still very high. One of these is their wellbeing action plan, which is free to download on the website. Um, all sorts, for some reason, I guess Richard Todd says, I love your shirt. And somebody else has just said, pineapples are a sign of luxury. Okay. And the year question wasn't quite right. So if you've got 9059, you've got a point. What? Thing is, I don't know what year question that was. Was it about one of the games? Was it about Yuri Gagarin? Was it? I've no idea. But anyway, if you put 1959, you got a point. So well done. Okay, um, let's move on. Um, I've given you the donation information. I'll do it one more time. Uh, text CWMT quiz. Put the amount, please. Well, five pounds, whatever. We know that times are very hard for a lot of people. It's a great charity but for whatever you can afford. Say you want to do 10 quid, just text to 70085 CWMT quiz and then put 10 at the end and send that through to 70085. You can click on the link below to our Just Giving page or you can click on the donate button on our website, www.cwmf.org.uk. Okay, I wonder how you, I'm not sure about these people who've got 19 and 20. Um, Let's have a look. Uh, round five. These are the questions. Which of these animals has three hearts? The octopus, the sloth, or the elephant? Which of these animals has three hearts? The octopus, the sloth, or the elephant? Now, I've only ever seen one sloth in my life. They're not, um, they wouldn't make a great pet. I was fishing, as I do from time to time, in Nicaragua, of all places. And I, I actually, I did, 
actually hook quite a large fish. And as I'm playing it, my mate went, oh, there's a teddy bear floating down the current. It's a very fast river. And we saw this little teddy all covered in green algae and things just floating down. And I went, oh, some poor little, poor little, probably very poor kid, because it's a pretty desperate place, Nicaragua. Some poor kid has lost his teddy, carried on playing this fish. But we finally got the fish out and put it and put it back eventually and whatever. It's big fish. This teddy was still going round and round in a little current um, right by our feet. Uh, and then he went, it's written by Martin, he went, it's not Teddy, look. And we got this thing out, it was all covered in green stuff, slime and weed and whatever, algae. And it went, like that sort of E.T. thing. And it, it just moved a bit. And I went, because it, it, it had three, which was a bit of a clue. I said, I think it's a three-toed sloth. I've never seen anything in my life like it, nor Martin. So the poor thing, we cleaned it off a bit and it still didn't move much, but it was, it was sort of breathing. And they said, well, I think it's alive. So we put it on this tree, just beside the river, put it on a tree. <laughs> and it ever, I mean, so slowly, it just went, hey, 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 hey. As far as I know, it's still, still climbing up there now. It's probably about halfway up by now, it was about five years ago. Just an amazing creature. Um, so, sorry, I digress, which I do a lot. Which of these animals has three hearts? The octopus, the sloth, or the elephant? Um, which two countries are at the beginning and the end of the Silk Road? Which two countries are at the beginning and the end of the Silk Road? Number three, who found the tomb of the Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun in 1921. Who found the tomb of Tutankhamun in 1921? I love question four. In the Teletubbies, what colour is Tinky Winky? What am I doing with my life? In the Teletubbies, what colour is Tinky Winky? Number, it's a, it's a rich and varied quiz, isn't it? Number five. Uh, true or false? The Channel Tunnel is the longest railway tunnel in the world. True or false? The Channel Tunnel is the longest railway tunnel in the world. True or false? Second one. Canada has more coastline than any other country in the world. Canada has more coastline than any other country in the world. True or false? And number three of three parts of question number five. Um, goldfish only have a memory of three seconds. True or false? And if it's true, they should go into politics. Goldfish only have a memory of three seconds, true or false. Wow, now, I told you it was going to be a star-studded evening at virtually no expense whatsoever. We've already had the breakfast host, Chris Moyles from Radio X. Now, by the wonder of technology and the years of back pocket money that I owe him, to set the final question this round, should be top DJ from Radio X and my son, Toby Tarrant. Oh, there you are. Hi, Dad. I haven't seen you <laughs> since you were seven. <laughs> have you grown? How are you doing? All right? Well, I'm all right. It's a sort of technical troll, but it's okay. It's all working. I'm now, liking, a word I'm to the wise. What? Which you don't like Starsky and Hutch. Which, is, which one? <laughs> <laughs> it's just called it's not really a hairdo it's just called not cutting it <laughs> i like it 
Yeah, well, thanks. What have you done to you? Actually, what have you done to yours? So Pippa cut mine. Did she? She so does I, cackling. For some reason, she, she does that on the radio. That's her job. She cackles on the radio. In the background. <laughs> the in Wicked the background. Witch of the West. I think Nikki Clark's job is safe, I'll be honest. Yeah. What does she use? A lawnmower? <laughs> I he's wearing a sort of ginger bun fluff. What's that? <laughs> what is it? It's me trying to look sophisticated. Is it it's working? Not, I love you, boy, but it's not working. <laughs> I also noticed you've shamelessly sat in front of all your awards. Not all my awards. I've no idea, actually, how many they are. 51. <laughs> as you can see, I've been sat in front of all of mine as well. Yeah, yeah. But you're <laughs> much, much, much younger than me. Don't worry. These aren't for doing anything good. They're just... Sort of turning up a lot over many many years. <laughs> um, now, when Moyles came on, yes, it was all very fine in its way, and a sort of yeah, well, it had something. I'm not quite sure what, but he forgot because <laughs> he's a busy man. Yes, he forgot to do the answer. So right. once you said now very carefully, once you set the question, yeah, don't immediately tell them the answer because that that'll spoil it. Okay, so can you stay around? I can hang around. Well, all the pubs are shut, so you've got nowhere to go. Yeah, nothing better to do. Might as well hang around. And then yeah. on cue, come back and tell okay. us the answer. I can't believe you're working this technological quiz. No, no, can I? This is a man who once lost his phone for a week and then found it in the freezer. Yeah, there is that. And it worked. <laughs> it, was all, it was all shiny. It was in a bag of boilies I brought back from fishing. I put it in the freezer. <laughs> It worked, it worked better than it worked for years. There is look that. at you now. Look at you now. Um, so I don't know what your question will be, but I just bet it will involve a well-known football club who were doing quite well at the moment. You are correct. I'll ask my question, then I'll disappear, and then I'll come back for the answer. Okay. So on this day last year, I was the most hungover man on the planet. I had just enjoyed the greatest night of my life in Madrid. Liverpool had just won their sixth European Cup. But who did they beat in the final to win it? That's my question. Oh, God, that's, that's among the pigeons and no mistake. Exactly. Six. Oh. So with the new social distance guidelines, all six of our Champions League trophies can now hang out in the park together, which is very, very nice. So are you going to finish the season? What's the plan? Do you know? Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I think we're going to finish the season. We only need to win one or two more games. So as long as we get two more games in, then they can yeah, go. You can't just win two games and then stop. <laughs> I'm fine. You with can't it. do that. <laughs> I don't care. Well, you can't because <laughs> there will be lots of teams who are playing you towards the end of whatever the season is this year, and it may well affect their chances of going up or down or relegation or whatever. Look, I have never seen Liverpool win the league in my life. I don't care how it happens. Two more games and then you can do what you want. Whoever they want can get relegated. I don't mind. Just give us the league, two more games, and then, and then we're done. Toby, you were born in Surrey. <laughs> You're a Surrey <laughs> scouser. This accent straight out of Bootle. Can't you tell? Yeah. OK, all right. It's I'll been marvellous to see you. After all these years, it's has got you grown since I saw you last. Um, <laughs> OK, now don't go, well, go away, but don't just sort of hover. I yeah. think that's a technical word. Hover. Yeah. I'll hover. I'll or hover. in your case, open a can of lager. Yep. <laughs> Good boy. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. right. See you in a bit. <laughs> Thank you. Love you. Just something you say to your kids. Love you. Um, okay. So ideally, he should um, he should come back and give us the answer. I think I know. And a lot of people out there will know. Um, yeah. Just seeing what's happening about the... Oh, no. I haven't got any new people coming in. Sorry. I've still got... No, I've still got the lush ladies of Lansing. Then back again. Um, so number one, which of the animals uh, has three hearts? The octopus, the sloth, or the elephant? Uh, and the answer is octopus. Uh, in which nations did the original start and end of the Silk Road lie? Well, it's Turkey one end. And it's basically China in the other end. Uh, number three. Um, who found the Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun's tomb in 1921? Uh, and in fact, they just said to him, you're achieving nothing. You're a complete waste of space. Um, 
and he had a few days left and he found it almost as he was packing up to go home. Um, number four, in the Teletubbies, what colour is Tinky Winky? Uh, and the answer is purple. Unless you're colourblind like me, in which case the answer is blue. Uh, and then these true or falses. Channel Tunnel, longest railway tunnel in the world. True or false, it's false. Um, Canada does have the biggest coastline of any country in the world. And a gold, goldfish only have a memory of three, three seconds is wrong. They actually, apparently, scientists worked out that they have uh, a memory of several months. That must be a hell of a job for a scientist, mustn't it? Looking that up. And a year ago yesterday, Liverpool won the Champions League for the sixth time in the year because they beat in the final. So we'll come up to Toby and we'll tell us that. Okay. So take your time, have a look at those. So can we go on to round six and then we'll do the answers up to that point here. Um, yeah, final round. So last round, question number one, who won Dancing on Ice in 2020? Last round, question number one, round six, who won Dancing on Ice? This year, one of the very last television programs actually to be made before this complete shutdown. Um, I know we're grateful for whatever's on, but God, there's some rubbish on my telly. Um, Gustav, Gustav Eiffel, who's the bloke who created the Eiffel Tower. Uh, he didn't want it to go to Paris. Um, so originally, what city did he actually design it for? Well, he wanted it for um, Barcelona, London, or Milan. So he didn't want it to go to Paris. He wanted it for Barcelona, or London, or Milan. Um, which bird can fly backwards? Which bird can fly backwards? Uh, number four. Oh, it's a Friends question. So the six stars of Friends have appeared in all 230 episodes. Who is the next most regular character? Good luck with that. The... Six main stars of Friends have appeared in all 236 episodes. But who is the next most regular character? And number five, bear in mind this is the last round, number five. Um, I would have thought this is very straightforward, but there was much confusion in the office. What is the first line? of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. What is the first line of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody? Now, as we've done these quizzes over the last few months, we've made something of a tradition for the final question. Um, and it's gonna be something very much to do with the charity we're here for tonight. So, number six, final question. Uh, and basically, it's fairly easy, you can look this one up. The Charlie Waller Memorial Trust uh, has responded to the need for virtual training by producing a series of webinars. Can you tell us the title of the one that is being featured for the month of June? I'm pretty sure you can find that one out. The Charlie Waller Memorial Trust has responded to the need for virtual training we need like never before, to be honest, um, by producing a series of webinars. Can you tell us the title of the one that is being featured for the month of June? 
Okay, we're gonna do a bit of thinking time. So can we go back to some of the answers um, on, I, I gave you some of the answers on round five, but some of the answers on round four, when we are sort of take that break for the busiest train stations in the UK and all those things. Um, let's shoot through those and then we'll go back to round five and then we'll do round six. So um, I asked you what are the five busiest stations in the UK? Um, yeah, the actual, answers in order are London Waterloo, not at the moment, but London Waterloo is the busiest, 94 million per year. Then it's London Victoria with 74 million. Uh, then it's Liverpool Street with 69 million. Then it's London Bridge with 61 million. Then it's Birmingham New Street. And that handles in a normal year, that handles 48 million people. I did, um, I think a couple of years ago, I was in Tokyo, and the busiest station in the world is the main station in Tokyo. They handle 3.5 million uh, passengers a day through the weekdays. 3.5 million passengers a day. It is absolute chaos. But, and people are running and screaming in all directions, but every single, every single train, and this is true all over Tokyo and all over Japan, every single train gets there exactly on time, which is probably not like the British experience. Um, the ice lollies. I can't believe you go did a survey of ice lollies, including those containing ice cream. Um, the favorite is Magnum. Yes, Magnum Caramel, yes. Uh, and then second was Fab, third was Solero, four was Twister, and five was Feast. And the other thing, when I asked you to think about them while you took a break, um, the, keep dropping bits of paper, the, um, so many bits of paper, sorry guys. Um, the five, Yes, the five names from um, New York uh, are Manhattan, the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, and Staten Island. So that's all five. There are 15 points available for that round. I think in all at the end, because we've done round six, there should be, I think, 52 points available. Whether anybody's got 52 or not, I don't know. I suspect not. There's a bloke here, Dave, Dave from Walsall, saying, I've got 51 already. Well, it's possible, but I think it's unlikely. Um, in fact, I think you may lie, Dave. Okay, um, let's shoot through uh, round five again. I did tell you some of the answers actually during this, but I want to come back to Toby as well. Um, the animal that has three hearts is the octopus. Uh, the nations that start and end the Silk Road are Turkey and China. Uh, it actually starts in Antioch and it ends in Xi'an, which is an amazing city where they have the Terracotta Army. And also, oh, if they're watching, but if they're not, congratulations anyway, Angus and Ollie, who last year rode for the Trust 12,000 kilometres, went through 10 countries. 
And if you think, and, and all the proceeds went to this uh, amazing charity. So brilliant, guys. Thank you. And if you think, if you're going from Turkey to China, forget about this year, because this year would be a no-no anyway, but Turkey to China, you just think about some of the places you'd cycle through. They would not be countries where you'd want to have a puncture, would they? Um, yeah, this guy, the, the Egyptian pharaoh who discovered Tutankhamun's tomb in 1921, just before he was dismissed for lack of results, uh, was called Howard Carter. Howard Carter, 1921. Um, the colour of Tinky Winky is purple. Um, and then the Channel Tunnel is not the longest rail tunnel in the world. Longest is actually the Gotthard Base Tunnel in Switzerland. Uh, it's something like 35.5 miles. And the Channel Tunnel is only about, uh, I think it's 30 or 31. Canada does have the, um, the biggest coastline in the world. So that's true. Channel Tunnel was false. Coastline was true. And goldfish only have a three-second memory. No, they don't. Uh, it can actually last for several months. Although, good luck to the scientists. Who what a dull job that would have been. So, our final question. Welcome back, Toby, to give us his answer. Here he comes again. Anytime you like. There he is, sharp as a tack. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tobes, what was the question again? Can you remember? Uh, my question was, a year and one day ago, who did Liverpool beat in the Champions League final to win their sixth? European Cup. Uh, be very, more than any be very careful. Be very careful, Toby, because remember you're in the south of England <laughs> and you don't want to be lynched before your top show. 10 o'clock tomorrow morning? 10 o'clock, Radio X. I'll take all the listeners I can get. I should be listening. <laughs> I know that you don't listen because you'll often call me whilst I'm halfway through a show because you don't realise I'm at work. I didn't think you had a job. <laughs> I thought you were still in prison. <laughs> Come on, Toby, what's the answer as if we don't know? Uh, the answer is the people that we gave an absolute spanking in the final was Tottenham Hotspur. Didn't I say to you, phrase it delicately, we're based in the south of England. We showed them what... Yes, was. all right. <laughs> yes. Sick. All right, Toby, it's been marvellous. Thank Good you, mate. You, I'll talk to you in the morning. See you tomorrow. Well it's done. Well, your well. top show. The quiz. Cheers. 10 o'clock, Radio X. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Thanks for that. Doodaloo. Well, at least you did the answer for us, unlike Moyles. Okay, um, right, so shall we do the answers to the final round? Can we do that? Yes, of course we can. There's nine points for that round. So this is the answers to the final round. Um, Dancing on Ice in 2020, uh, the winner was Joe Swash. This is a very weird story about Gustav Eiffel in his tower. He originally, well, he didn't want it to go in Paris at all. Um, he originally intended it for uh, to be designed for uh, either Barcelona or London or Milan. He actually wanted it to go to Barcelona. Um, so that's the right answer. But the Catalans, they said it was too ugly and we don't want it here. You think of all the tourists that have gone to Paris just to see the Eiffel Tower. I think they made Mr. Trick. Um, number three, which bird can fly backwards? And it's actually the hummingbird. And I've actually seen them do this. It's very odd. They'll come up to your table or something. They'll stop and, and hover. Then they go forward a bit and they actually fly off backwards. It's a completely useless skill, but it's quite impressive. Uh, the six main stars in all 236 episodes. Uh, a friend's appeared in every single one for a huge amount of money. But um, the next most regular character to appear in the show, uh, we can't accept the coffee shop owner. Well, we could give you a half point, I suppose. It doesn't really matter to that. Um, but the actual answer is Gunther. Gunther was in 151 episodes. Um, 236 episodes, I can't believe that. And they repeat and repeat and repeat. Um, the first line of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody, is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? I once saw a bloke, you shouldn't do this, I once saw a bloke at a karaoke evening, and he didn't know, he didn't know the song. It's a really, really hard song to do. Nobody who can't sing, he couldn't sing, nobody who can't sing should ever do Bohemian Rhapsody. And he didn't know the words, and it also lasts for about seven minutes. 
and it was just excruciating. There were things like, born in an earthquake. It was just horrendous. Hey, he's probably watching. Uh, the final one. The Charlie Waller Memorial Trust has responded to the need for virtual training by producing a series of webinars. Can you tell us the title of the one being featured for the month of June? Uh, and the answer is being, I think it's rather nice, being kind to yourself. Forward this to anyone you think might benefit. The Trust has got lots more webinars and podcasts in the pipeline, so make sure you keep an eye out for these. So there were a total of six points available in that round. Um, I don't know whether you can get your scores to come up in the chat box, but if not, put them through and leave them up. We might see them later, just to amuse ourselves, really. And of course, you can lie. Uh, a lot of people have donated their scores in pounds, so bless you guys. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have this superb prize, a mountain of the finest chocolate, um, and an engraved tumbler with a signature Chris Tarrant scribbled on it. You don't, you don't have to have that bit if you just have the tumbler. Um, anyone who wants to enter our draw, the password for the draw is awareness, which is a good, good word for uh, this current uh, world we're living in. The password for the draw is awareness. Complete the short form by the link. Um, so tell us how you did in the chat box. Um, I've told you about the prize. Um, please, please, I'll tell you one more time about how to donate. You've been great tonight. I've got loads of stuff coming in here. I haven't got a full total. And obviously, we will leave this up and open. Um, donate up to £20. You can text the word CWMT quiz plus your donation. So if you're going to give us 20 quid, please. Um, CWMT quiz 20 plus your donation. And that number to text is 70085. So you give us five up, CWMT quiz five to 70085. Or you can go to the Just Giving page, or you can click on the donate button on your website, www.cwmtorg.uk. Thanks for uh, coming along tonight. Thanks for linking up with us. It's been good fun. Um, thanks so much for everybody involved with Charlie Waller, because I think what they do is just extraordinary. A lot of parents would have just crawled away into a corner, but they've been amazing. And they have created something extraordinary out of great tragedy in their lives. So bless you. Thank you, everybody, for donating tonight. Please keep the money coming in. I hope you had a nice time. If you did have a nice time, I was Chris Darren. Uh, if you didn't, I was Chris Evans. Night-night.